All right, we're out here. And as you can see, we're at a 20 ton LG Multi-V unit. And I just released the video from being downstairs of showing you the watt consumption uh, of the 4.5 ton air handler. And this unit has four of those air handlers on this one unit right here. And you've seen that the lights are blazing downstairs. There's 100 lights on inside that room producing heat. There are six uh 350 pint dehumidifiers producing heat in that room there's only a few fans right now and this unit just switched off because now i gotta jump to the other unit god dang it's gonna make me <laughs> work um well if you've seen earlier in the video it had five point something kv of power being drawn in watts on this 20 ton system but it just satisfied the room so it doesn't need to be running right now it'll come back on in a minute once uh the temperature raises a little bit and that just blew my video but it was five if you look in the beginning of the video and it was five point something kv on here it's 491 volts almost 500 volts at the system this is a 480 system but our our power here is a little high and that unit just turned off in that room so that's how efficient these units. and did you hear how quiet they are i'm still talking and the units were both running and i have one unit right behind me i have one unit right in front of me and if you go back to the video and listen for when you can hear the whine of the inverter just kick off we have two compressors in here one two and two compressors inside there so the units are quiet the units are vibration free and for 20 ton system units they their power consumption is next to nothing now here's the standby power we're looking at it right now that would be 1.25 kv so roughly 250 watts are being consumed in standby to keep all the electronics powered up well the system is off but it's very rarely off it'll be coming back on in a minute as the room temperature goes back up but I just wanted to show you that and uh, you guys who are the math whizzes out there can do the math and uh, convert it over for the guys who are used to more like uh, 240 volts or 208 volts because unfairly not many guys work on 480 Oh, take a look at this, the electricians. Well, remember I showed you their hack work that they did before with the wires that were all dangly on the really thin, thin lug, the really cheap shit, and they used wire crimpers. I mean, not wire crimpers. They used uh, pliers to do uh, the electrical, and they had their janky little scrawny uh, thin lugs you know wire eyelets on here well take a look at this uh i told one of their supervisors about the uh, do-it-yourself kind of hack juan day work that was being done here and when i came out here this morning the wiring was corrected and they actually use real quality lug terminals on here and they even put shrink wrap over them and basically they did them the way I do them. But see, if you don't say anything and they don't know if the supervisor or the boss doesn't know janky shit is going on, or even if they do know and they just look the other way because it's good enough and it's cheap. You know, these cost several dollars a piece instead of a little 30 cent or 10 cent janky ass residential do it yourself kind of uh, lug nut. Um, so this is their corrected work only after I said something. The owner of this building, the guys who are paying for this equipment, would never know that janky ass work was being done on their units. And later on you get a failure and you single phase, you know, one leg drops out because one terminal burns, well, their loose connections over time oxidation burn out and you drop a leg or you just build up high resistance. So say you're delivering 
470 volts to this one winding, but 490 volts to the other two windings because of their bad crimps. That kind of shit doesn't fly. And this is what's considered standard. In a lot of this work, in a lot of places that I come across, you've seen many of my videos when I out on jobs, different electrical companies, they hire the cheapest guys they can, they don't attend webinars, they don't get sent out for training, they have zero formal education, they're just a guy who works under a guy who worked under a guy who just kind of showed them ropes, but nothing to do with quality, and that's what happens. But if you say something, maybe things will change. It's all about education. I didn't get on them, I wasn't pissed. I told the guy, I go, don't, don't yell at your guys, don't get angry at your guys. I just want them to do better so they learn and do higher quality work so they don't disgrace the trade. I'm not an electrician, but there's no reason, and I always fall back when I'm up on these jobs, because I usually do this work myself, but when I'm up on a job and I'm talking to an electrician, you know, I don't know nothing. I'm just an automotive mechanic who changes oil and rotates tire. That's my level of knowledge. Then why am I pointing this out to you and why did this kind of work get done? I have to put my thumbs up. It's good that they stepped up a bar and they came up here and corrected the job. All right, see you guys.